changes to how Amazon handled the buy box. And if I remember this right, it was something like um, uh, there would they wouldn't give the buy box to people that were higher than um, than the current buy box. Am I understanding that right? Yeah, I had mentioned an observation that myself and several sellers have made where if you weren't matching the buy box price, they wouldn't rotate you in on certain products. Uh, oh. Usually you can be 1%, 2% over, or a couple of pennies over, and you rotate in, but that doesn't always seem to be the case since like August, at least for me. And Sean can weigh in if you see anything differently. That's just what I've seen and heard. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're definitely uh, a lot of that. Um, but what, what's really been going on is uh, they they, re, they changed everything, uh, you know, in the last few weeks. So uh, everybody's having the same issues where, uh, you know, like Todd said, in the past, you know, you could be, you know, a couple dollars more, a couple cent more, you know, depending on the price. But uh, over the last few weeks, you know, if you're not at least matching the price, uh, you know, you're not taking the buy box anymore or it's not rotating. Um, you know, definitely to take it, you're going to have to be lower. But if everybody was in the same price range, uh, you know, it would rotate around, but it's just not doing that anymore. Uh, you know, everybody uses a repricer. Are you using a repricer yet? No, I'm, I'm, I'm this close. <laughs> I mean, you should definitely sign up for Be Cool. We got a 40% discount and it's only something like, 20 bucks to begin with. Right. You know, so we're not talking about using like App Eagle anymore. Um, you know, and that was like 150 bucks to get the buy box a month. So, you know, the cost is really, really low, you know, especially since you sell a lot of higher priced items. Um, right. um, so, and then, you know, there's no reason because, you know, if you're ever repricing, then you're just wasting your time. Because somebody right. with a repricer is going to immediately uh, reprice and get the buy box back from you. So anytime you put into that, um, you're just losing it all. So you you get a get a repricer. You know, set the the few rules you want. Set your high and low for the item, and you know, let it try and get the buy box. Okay. Yeah. No, I have to do it because I am wasting a lot of time looking at that. And then the first time I was really playing around with that, I think it just. It's really just me and Amazon selling at this with this product that I have and selling for three hundred dollars, and um, I just n I never looked at it really. And then so I take my price, I take it from three hundred to two ninety nine just to see what would happen, and then instantly Amazon lowers theirs to two ninety two ninety eight, and then I put it and then I change it again back to I think it was three oh four, and Amazon went back to uh, you know uh, three. 303 or something like that. I was like, oh, this, this you, there's no choice but to have a repricer. Right. So, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, Amazon does three things. They either will raise, the, um, you know, raise and lower the price, like they have a repricer just like you do. Um, sometimes they don't change the price. And sometimes, uh, you know, no matter what you do, you won't get the buy box. You know, if you go to 50% of, of their price, they still don't give it up. Uh, you know, but it's very rare that they're not giving up the buy box. Usually, uh, they want everybody to have the lowest price. So they want you to sell your stuff. They, they usually make more money when a third party seller is selling the item than they do because they're, you know, they're working on razor thin margins and um, they're going to make more money in fees from you than the very little margins that they get. So they usually don't mind giving up the buy box, you know, in some cases they, they do, um, you know, I, I think it's just, you know, what team is listing those items that it depends on what you're actually, um, you know, going to be able to do with them. But so in, I should just sit, I should just sit tight in that case. Um, they give you know, at some point they're going to bottom out, you know, they're only going to go so low. You know, they have their own rules. They're not probably not going to lose much money, um, you know, so it's really up to you. I mean, if it, is it a fast selling item? No, no. I, you know, I, I would say, uh, I think I looked it up, maybe one, one a month. Okay. And if Amazon, uh, do they have a lot of them? I mean, have you checked to see how many they have? No, I didn't. No, I guess that would be a, the first I mean, You know step. how to do that, right? 
Yeah, I think you just put in like a large number as if right. you're going to buy it. And Go it'll up to 999, right. and then it'll change it to however many they have in stock. Okay. You know, if it's not a crazy item that's selling, you know, a ton every day, no. then they, um, they usually don't have a limit. You know, some items will have a limit of two or a limit of three, so you only be able to add three. But, you know, those are like hot toys and things yeah. like that. Um, yeah. You know, with a slow selling item, I've, I don't think I've ever seen, you know, any kind of uh, purchase limitation. So you can usually see what they have in stock. You know, but if they have 900 or over 1,000 of them in stock, then, um, you, know, you can't really wait it out if it's not selling well. You know, so you just got to fight them for it. Um, or the other option is just to go, you know, maybe a couple cents less than them because there are buyers who just, you know, don't care. They want the absolute cheapest price no matter where they get it from. Um, you know, I've got tons of items that I don't ever have the buy box on, uh, but I'm the cheapest price. So, you know, people, I still get sales, you know. It happens a lot in books and toys, you know, in media. So, uh, you know, that's another option. That's true. Thank you. Sure. Uh, did anyone else have any questions? Or, you know, I mean, we just talk more about a vacation or, you know, whatever. Woohoo, let's talk about that. Just kidding, just kidding. Let's talk about responsible things. Let's talk about responsible things. Yeah, Q4, candy. I mean, if everybody saw, uh, found some candy to send in. Uh, you no, know, people gotta have questions. Ask away, now's the time. Ask, ask, ask. I mean, we went to Walmart. Uh, I got a new paid group. Um, you know, if anybody didn't hear about it. Um, it's eighty dollars a month, but if you're a member of the mastermind group, it's uh, you know it's only uh, forty nine ninety nine. Uh, you know, so I hired a team of people to go out, you know, to retail stores and find stuff to source, um, you know, at full price. So, um, you know, we started a, a free group that we're going to be posting uh, bolos for free in there. So, um, you know, if you didn't see it in the group, uh, you should probably go ahead and join that. Um, you know, it's just some more free items to buy or, you know, not buy. Uh, you know, we're finding a ton of good, you know, uh, holiday stuff for Halloween. Some stores already have Christmas items out. Uh, we basically scanned every, you know, candy item in Walmart and Target uh, already and, you know, baking items and uh, lots of things like that. Um, you know, there's just a ton of good stuff out there. You know, if you're not in the group, uh, you know, at least join the free group. Uh, we'll post it in the chat. And, uh, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, go find the stuff yourself. You know, if you have the time, go start sourcing at all these uh, retail stores. There's a ton of good Halloween stuff, and they're already bringing out Christmas. So, uh, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be making plenty of money right now. Uh, this is the time. We're getting yeah, we're getting on and off feedback from somebody, so if everybody could kind of check their mics, we have some feedback. What was that? Sorry. Uh, no, I said there's some feedback on and off from somebody. I'm not sure, so if everybody could check their mic, we have some feedback. Everybody's mic should be off, but. Um, let me just double check. No, nope, that's good. I don't hear it anymore. Okay, it was probably the person I muted. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're finding a lot of good stuff. Um, the shoe video, um, yeah, there's a lot of information in that. Um, you know, I don't know, if, if you didn't see my post, um, you know, the new Adidas Yeezy shoes, are um are really hot right now um so you know I, I i we did find a way to um not only get alerted but get on a waiting list and um be able to reserve some of these shoes uh they're selling between 500 and three thousand dollars a pair on amazon and ebay 
Um, some of them have sold for up to $10,000 on eBay. <coughs> um, they're really the hottest closing item out this year. Um, they sold out in minutes of being released. Um, and we've been able to, um, you know, uh, talk to some people, uh, you know, that we found uh, that work with Adidas. And we have a whole list of every, um, every store that carried um, the last run, which were the 350s. Um, or the 750s. 350s came first in the 750s, and they uh, they just announced that the 950s will be coming out um, sometime in October. So they haven't released a date yet, uh, but you know there's a lot of information there, and we just want to make sure we get everything right. Uh, but we should have it all done uh, sometime this week. So um, you know it should be able to help everyone out. Uh, you know quite a bit I hope uh, they're not sold and they weren't sold in every area so um, you know it would only apply in select cities and the app checks there's an app uh, that helps you with it and it checks to see actually where you're located so if you're not enough you can't you know reserve it in Florida and pick it up in New York uh, you actually have to be there to get um, the reserve so, you know, different people couldn't be helping you uh, to reserve the shoes, but, um, you know, hopefully it'll work out for some people. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with the shoes. And, um, you know, we're getting prepped for Q4. Uh, did anybody have any questions? You can come on video. Uh, you know, talk on audio, um, you know, whatever, uh, however you need to get your questions across. You know, these, these videos are really uh, a big part of the group. And, uh, you know, we found the people that drop out of the group every month are, are the people who, you know, never post, never ask questions. Uh, so any, you know, every time somebody leaves, it's somebody, you know, I really can say I've never even heard of. I, I didn't even know they were in the group because they never posted, never commented, you know, and never asked any questions. Um, so I'm hoping you're joining uh, these mastermind groups to, uh, you know, to get help and to um, to grow your business. But if you're not asking any questions, then we don't know what we can help you with. Right. This is the time to do it. If you don't take advantage, then and we can't give you what, what you need. Um, Sean, we do have actually two questions. So Ross, um, that's pretty simple. Um, she says, would um, she be able to purchase candy bolos and use the receipts to try and get ungated in her Hi, Sammy! Sorry. Hi. Hi. I miss you already. Um, so can she use those to get ungated in grocery? Um, definitely. You can, um, you can use anything mm -hmm. in the grocery category. So um, if Perfect. you're... Um, sorry, I, I, I was reading a different comment and I guess, okay. So Ross wants to know, if you're not ungated in grocery, yeah, I mean, you can literally go out and buy 10 of any grocery item. So yeah, candy, you know, the candy is fine. You know, it's items that are listed in, in the grocery category on Amazon. So, um, Sorry. You know, it, it doesn't matter if it's candy or what it is. Um, that's my daughter. Okay. Now you're in, you gotta come up and say hi. Say hi, Auntie Valerie. Hi. Hi, Sammy. I miss you. Okay. I'd show you Sammy, but he's in a bad bath. Oh, he's saying hi, too, Sammy. Okay. Good night. Yes, come on. Daddy's got business to do. What's up, Bill? Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, come on. Let's go get our hands. You guys move them on, honey. We gotta go. Go ahead, Sam. Just step over. Okay, so Ross, um, hopefully you know that answered it. Yes. No, no, no. I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, it brings up a good point. 
Um, you know, when somebody talks about beauty or health and personal care or grocery or any category on Amazon, you know, it doesn't matter what it actually is. You know, so if somebody lifts a backpack in clothing when, you know, it should be in shoes and handbags or, you know, they lift a grocery item, um, you know, in home because they're not approved in grocery, then that item, you know, is in that category now. So you can't get approved with, for grocery with an item that's listed under beauty. It doesn't matter, you know, if it is a grocery item. So when you take your scanner and scan these items uh, to buy them, just worry about, um, you know, what category they're listed in. You know, the, they don't have to be expensive. Um, we've gotten plenty of people uh, approved, you know, with items from the dollar store or dollar items, you know, especially in beauty and health. You know, um, I recommend people buy 10 items. You buy 10 things, buy nothing else on that receipt, and um, you have three separate receipts. You can just buy them one after the other. You can do them all at Walmart. Um, nowhere does it say it have to, has to be three separate stores. Um, so, you know, you, you do all these things, uh, and I've had very little um, reports of problems, you know, but... What Amazon wants, the point of the receipts is not that you can find some receipt. It's to prove that you're, you're, sell, you're buying enough um, to prove, uh, you know, um, an amount for resale. So you can't go there and buy three of something, although people have been approved with three items. Uh, but usually you don't get approved with three. I tell everybody to buy ten. So you're going out and you're spending about $30. Is it worth $30 to get approved in any Amazon category? I mean, of course, I, you know, I make way more than that every day in plenty of categories. So, you know, don't worry about finding a good item. Worry about getting approved. You know, if you spend $30 and take that stuff and throw it in the dumpster on the way out the store, it, it doesn't matter. All you need is those receipts. Don't worry about reselling it. Don't worry about how much profit, you know, don't worry about even having to send it in. Just find those items that you can get to get approved. You know, you're spending this money to get approved. You're not spending it to find a good item to sell. Um, so, um, you know, the answer of course is yes. You know, you can use the candy um, you, you can buy the candy or buy anything that you scan and it comes up as grocery to get approved in grocery. Grocery, beauty, and the health and personal care are, you know, the three easiest ones to get into. All you have to do is send in some receipts. If you have too many problems, you know, just let it um, wait out and, you know, the case will get closed and just do it again. There's no limit on how many times you can apply for any category. So, if you send it in and they don't like it and you send in some more and you still, you know, they don't like it and you go back and forth four or five times, just let that case close out and reapply, you know, immediately. As soon as the case gets closed, apply again, you know, stop responding to them. The case will close and you apply again and you get a whole new set of reps. Every time you respond, you get a new rep. So you might, um, you know, it might go better the next time. Um, okay, what's the next question? All right, perfect. Um, and then, Lauren, for your question, which is next, please um, just send me a private message, and I'll get that over to you. Um, Liz, she says um, she's feeling a little overwhelmed by Q4, doesn't have any questions, just need to do it, so maybe we should address, like, steps to Q4. Um, Right. I mean, you just have to send the stuff in. Um, Amazon has taken all the hard work out for you. So, you know, all you literally have to do is go out and find stuff, you know, and there's my, you know, Bolo group or, you know, don't join my group, join, join another group, you know, and there's tons of the groups out there that will, um, you know, provide the items for you to buy. Um, so all you literally have to do is go and buy the stuff other people told you to buy and send it to Amazon. And if you're buying it online, you don't even have to do that. You can send it to a prep company and let them send it to Amazon for you. 
Um, you know, they've taken all the hard work, sending stuff to customers, dealing with customers, you know, having a hundred different size boxes and, and packaging and, you know, labeling. Um, all you do is if you have something like scan power, you scan the barcode, you put the stuff in a box, you send it into Amazon and, and that's it. Um, you know, it really can't get any easier than that. So if you have the stuff already, I mean, lots of people get stuff, they, they go out and buy a ton of product and then it just sits in their basement or bedroom or wherever and they, you know, they can't get it out. So, you know, if you have friends or family that you can hire to help you, let you know, give them $10 and teach them how to scan a barcode. Um, you know, with scan power, that's all it is. You scan a barcode, it tells you what box to put it in, and you put the shipping label on it. Um, you know, you can teach anybody to do that. So wherever your, your bottleneck is, then, um, you know, find some way around that. You know, hire somebody. You know, even if you're working a full-time job, you know, if you're making $30 an hour and you can pay somebody 8 or $10 an hour to pack, you know, to pack boxes for you, then, you know, then do that. Just get that stuff into Amazon. Um, uh, Liz wanted to know, I don't know if I'm jumping around here, but um, let's see. Uh, Liz bought candy to get approved, cheap candy that she donated to collection for the troops. She did three separate store things. Um, I wish I didn't know I'd need to. I bought travel size items for health and beauty. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I help some employees of mine, um, you know, that I'm sure you see in the groups. Uh, you know, Trina and Tony, uh, they both work, they work for me. So, um, you know, I went to Walmart with them and we bought, you know, $1 boxes of Q-tips and some chapstick and some other items. And, you know, they were approved in a couple of days. Um, you know, so they just want you to show them that you can follow directions, um, you know, and it's just that simple. Uh, Ryan said he bought ramen noodles. Um, I've, so, I've sold a ton of ramen noodles, so don't, you know, don't skip over ramen noodles. Um, you know, the big boxes, the six packs, um, you know, the hot and spicy little big cups. Uh, you know, we, we, over the years, we've sold quite a few of them. Um, Liz wants to know, are we going to be tracking hot toys um, in my bol uh, my Bolo group, I'm assuming? Um, yeah, we, um, you know, I have a team that, um, you know, I hired specifically for this group. Um, you know, I had some employees that weren't working full time, and um, I have some new employees that uh, I've trained very well to go out and do uh, retail arbitrage just like I do. Um, and they go to the store and they literally scan every item, you know, on the shelf from top to bottom, all the way down an aisle. And uh, that's what we post in there. Um, you know, we go to different stores, we go to different sections, but we're getting full coverage. So, you know, if we're looking at food and we look at, you know, the, spice, the baking and spices and, you know, flour and sugar, they're all in the same aisle at Walmart. You know, they scan every single item on that in that aisle. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for the toys. You know, the hot toys, you're not going to make a lot of money on. Uh, the things in the Toys R Us, you know, holiday catalog they send out are not usually the items you're going to want. And you're not going to know, you know, it's a hot item until it's hard to find. So you know, at that point, you go out and start trying to find it. But at this point, you know, things like the, um, for example, they had that giant bat cave, you know, that was selling for two or $300. And I think it was like $60 uh, last year was one of the hottest things. Um, you know, in October, we didn't know that and nobody bought them because all you could do is buy them at retail for $60 and Amazon was selling them. Then Amazon sold out and all we could do was scramble and go and try and find as many as we could. You know, I sent in dozens of them and I made tons of money, but, um, you know, nobody was really buying them in October because there was no reason to. You know, we could have went on 
saved a lot of time if we would have known it was a hot item. We could have gone on Amazon and bought a hundred of them or a thousand of them. I mean, they probably had tens of thousands of them in stock. You know, I had looked at it in the past, but every time I see it, it was cheaper on Amazon than it was at Toys R Us or Walmart. Um, and they had an unlimited supply at the time, but, you know, it became so popular and such a hot item that uh, everybody bought them. Walmart sold out. The price kept shooting up. They were sold out in every store. And that's the items that you want to find. And even the biggest sellers, you know, aren't betting on those items. They're, they're betting on on items that are selling out, you know, things like Shopkins, um, you know, were hot last year. Series one and two are going to be hot this year. You know, cases of series one are selling for four or $500, but uh, when series one was out, nobody was buying them. Now series three, I mean, there was, you know, the whole shelf was full when I was at Target today and um, of everything, even the individual ones. If you follow Shopkins, you know, you know how hard they were to find, you know, the little blind bags, which is in like a, a basket was, you know, selling for 20 or $30 and, you know, like $500 for a full case of 24. So, um, you know, you just got to, uh, you, you really got to be sourcing for those things in the moment. When you find the hot items, you know, go out and search for them. Watch my videos on how you can find items at, uh, you know, places like Walmart using the app. You know, you look up the item and you see all, however many stores you have in your area, 20 different Walmarts, it'll show you, um, you know, close to if they have them in stock or not. Um, you know, so, you know, that'll help you. We are tracking toys in, uh, in our Bolo group. So, you know, we are scanning the toy department. And we'll, you know, we go back every week and we, you know, look for any toys that we don't have, we haven't scanned, um, you know, and we'll get them in the system. And when they're, when it's a good deal, then uh, we buy it um, and we share it, of course. Um, how does, Debbie wants to know, how does everyone prep the bags of candy? Um, so what we do is... Um, you know, nothing, you know, we put a label on it and we send it off. If the expiration date is, is readable, then you don't need to do anything. All right. Hey, I don't know if you can hear me, but we can't hear you. We haven't, a um, couple minutes, we haven't been able to, or not maybe. Now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. okay. Sorry. So, um, we're really doing no prep on candy. We put a label on it. If the expiration date is readable, then, um, you know, you don't need to put your own expiration date. So, you know, we don't bubble wrap or any other problems. So um, I, I'm not sure what uh, extra prep you would do, but, you know, grocery items don't need extra prep. If it's not breakable, you know, if it's not Oreo cookies, if it's not in glass, then you don't need to do anything. All you have to do is put the label on and send it into Amazon. Um, Black Friday items. Um, we go out on Black Friday. Um, I don't go out on Thursday night anymore. It's just completely ridiculous now. Um, and we go out, we get up Friday morning, we go out on Friday, and um, almost all the deals are there. You're probably not going to get the door busters. Excuse me. But, um, you know, you're, you're not going to get the door busters anyway, you know, unless you're first in line. And, uh, you know, to buy one item or two items, I don't think it's worth it to get in line, you know, Thursday morning, miss Thanksgiving, not spend any time with your family to get one or two items. You know, for people who are buying it for themselves, yes, but people 
for reselling, probably not worth it. So all those deals that are there uh, Thursday night are almost always there uh, Friday morning. Um, so, you know, we hit up all the stores, you know, we hit up eight, 10 different stores Friday morning. There's nobody there. Um, and we, uh, you know, we buy, you know, all kinds of good deals. Uh, Toys R Us, I mean, I've bought hundreds of diapers, you know, uh, the last couple of years. We bought, um, they had the diapers with, uh, you know, that looked like Santa Claus on them, the red and white um, Huggies. And, you know, they're usually about $5 and they sell for about 25 bucks on Amazon every year. Um, you know, so things like that. Um, you know, things that people aren't going crazy for, you know, there's still tons of deals the next day. So, uh, I don't fight the crowds. Um, but, uh, you know, um, the, the prices don't, don't usually tank uh, on those items, you know, uh, they're so cheap to begin with that it's not a, uh, a problem, uh, for the most part. Um, You know, hey. um, I don't know how many, sorry, what? No, go ahead, go ahead. I thought you were done. Never no. mind, go ahead. I, I don't know how many, uh, you know, resellers are actually, you know, out there fighting the crowds. Uh, you know, for the most part, the things that I buy aren't on, um, you know, they don't have the limits of one or two. You know, I'm not trying to buy the $200 computers or, or things like that. I'm buying, you know, lower priced items probably, you know, five to 10, you know, up to 40 or $50 that, um, you know, I can double my money or more on, you know, the store is probably not making any money, but, um, you know, I mean, there's plenty of stuff to be made. I mean, we spent several thousand dollars on Black Friday, um, but I would have as much as you can, you know, in before then, uh, because Cyber Monday is really the biggest day of the year, um, you know, for Amazon. So, So get as much as you can in before then, sell whatever you can, and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll have some money uh, ready for um, for Cyber Monday. But I would say have as much money together as you can. Uh, I'm sorry, Black Friday. You know, and there's a ton of deals on Cyber Monday. You know, all the, you know, it's not just Amazon. All the, the stores that have, uh, you know, online presence is going to have great deals. Uh, you know, Best Buy, Walmart, Target, you know, all the places we're buying from already, um, you know, have huge, huge sales on that day. Uh, and a lot of them have uh, big sales in the store as well because they're trying to fight for, you know, some of those online dollars uh, in store. Um, I'm assuming they were talking, Lauren wanted to know which app, uh, so I'm assuming that was the, the Walmart app, uh, yeah. a YouTube video on, um, you know, how to, if you find something, you know, good at one store or you see a bolo online, you can look that up in the Walmart app and it'll show you all the local uh, stores around you uh, that, that have it in stock. Uh, you know, some of them might not actually have them in stock because they got damaged or this place is stolen. Um, Kelly has had, um, you know, buys a lot from liquidation.com. Um, so, you know, she might have some input on that. Uh, 888 lots, uh, I've spoken to them um, uh, in the past. Um, my friend Sam Cohen, he, um, he buys quite a bit from them, uh, but they're local to him, so, you know, there's no shipping or anything else going on there. Um, liquidation.com, uh, you know, is good for the bigger pallets, uh, you just have to investigate what you're buying pretty well. Right, Kelly? Yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of people don't like it. I, I've read I've read a lot of bad reviews. I've had very good experience with them. But again, for me, I'm local. I can go, I can drive to the warehouse and pick it up. Um, so it saves me a lot of money on shipping. Um, you know, they, they do a lot of Home Depot. Um, although I did catch word, uh, unfortunately, that the New Jersey location is closing. But they've got tons of other locations across the United, entire United States. Awesome. Um, 
Yeah, so 888-LOTS, um, you know, they do do quite a bit. Um, they also will, um, they have a new um, service where they're going to be prepping and sending directly to Amazon for you, the items you buy from them. Uh, Liquidation.com, I'd stay away, you know, from the salvage. Um, if you're somewhere where they have a warehouse, you can sort by the warehouse there. Um, and... You know, most of the bad reviews on these companies like liquidation.com are because the people don't understand what they're buying. You know, you have to understand that you're buying liquidation. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of liquidation. Kelly buys a lot of liquidation. But, you know, most people don't un understand that they're not buying new stuff. You know, they think liquidation is like a liquidation, you know, store they might see in their area, which is just, you know, marked down or... You know, uh, I see these stores all over the country where people are just, um, you know, selling things that aren't necessarily used. They're just, uh, you know, shelf pulls or, you know, they, they got a good deal um, or, you know, the store is buying, you know, so at some kind of, of deal where they're still selling new items, um, but they're just discontinued or you know, last year's clothing, and people have gotten used to that. So they don't know that their shelf pulls or if it says returns, they're actually returns. Um, and you have to be ready to put in um, a lot more time than you would just buying something at retail. So you get a lot better prices, but uh, it's costing you time to do the work to actually uh, get it in a new condition or verify that it is what you expected it to be. Um, we have posted, uh, you know, a ton of um, liquidation companies to buy from. Uh, I don't know where you're located, Ryan, but if you um, just search for in the group hashtag liquidation, you're going to see... Um, You know, you'll, you'll see all the liquidation companies that, um, that we posted. And, uh, you know, every time we find a new one or a new place to deal with, we, you know, we share them. Sometimes they send us deals and we share those deals. Um, new Hampshire and the Northeast, there's not, uh, there's not a whole lot. But, um, you know, it really doesn't matter where, uh, where the company is located because a lot of these companies are shipping directly um, you know, from the source. So, you know, if you're buying Target uh, liquidation, for example, uh, the liquidation company might just ship directly from, uh, from Target or um, Target or Walmart or Kohl's or wherever it is that you're, you're buying from. Um, so that liquidation company might not matter so much. Um, All right, sorry, what were I just asked if we were moving up, if you needed the next one or I missed a little bit. So yeah. Um, is there a program that uh, you can use to see product rankings by brand like Trader Joe's or Pottery Barn? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know of anything that would, uh, that would do that exactly. But when I'm looking for, uh, products, what I do is uh, search backwards, basically. So what I would do is I would go to Amazon and I would search for, um, you know, Trader Joe's, for example. I used to do a lot of sourcing at Trader Joe's. Um, I'll, just, I'll just share my screen and, and show you. So... So if we go to Amazon and um, yeah, and you want to find good products from Trader Joe's. Now, of course, Speculoos cookie butter is you know the hottest item they've ever sold. Um, so I'm gonna I look backwards. So I usually will go to the item and then it says from Trader Joe's. So you click on that and it's going to show you um, a lot of Trader Joe's items. 
usually. There's 2,423 listings that people listed as Trader Joe's as the manufacturer. Um, so what we can do is, um, you know, if we want to find groceries, we'll go to groceries. And uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of options here. You have featured, uh, sorted by the price, or the customer review. So if we're looking at featured, um, you know, you can't scan any items at, at Trader Joe's because they have their own barcode system. Uh, so it's not a standard UPC. Um, I, I myself have sold a lot of this cookie butter. I've sold um, a lot of these pink Himalayan salts here. They cost quite a bit more money. Um, coconut oil, uh, you know, quite a few items here. Now you can see the stuff in glass. Most of them are not. Um, I've sold hundreds of these pumpkin butters right here. Um, like this, you can see has no no FBA sellers because uh, you know it's liquid. Um, the peanut butter, peanut butter. Most people don't understand that it, it's also liquid. So what we're doing is, um, you know, these are about four dollars a piece. So what I um, see, it's ranked thirty three hundred. Um, but it's costing you about eight dollars, so it's going to cost you about you're going to make about five dollars profit um, on two of them. You know, not counting the shipping, um, and it's two pounds. So um, I would say this is about a break-even uh, price right here, and definitely something I wouldn't want to sell at this point. Um, so what I basically do is I go through. Uh, for Trader Joe's, and I would find all the items that I think I might want to sell, and I can make a guess of how much it's going to cost. You know, um, virgin coconut oil, at the very minimum, is going to be 5 or $6. Um, and I know these nuts are about $5. This, um, this pumpkin butter is about $3, and it's only sold, uh, you know, for about 10 weeks. And it's ranked 10000 Um it apparently is not um, restricted for being liquid. Uh, it actually is a very solid item. Um, maybe they just haven't gotten caught yet. Uh, but I would load this into scan power and see the, the cost is eleven forty two. Um, the net payout six dollars. So. Uh, I think this costs about three dollars so you're just about doubling your money on this item so what we would do is I would put all this information into a spreadsheet you know the rank um, the net payout um, and you know the item names and I'd make a list and then when I would go into the store we would show um, you know, I I'd go and choose the items that I want to buy. You know, if I didn't know the price, I would know the payout is uh, six oh five on this item, and I'd have it in my spreadsheet that I printed. Um, you know, so I could subtract whatever the cost is from that. Um, you know, so there's, there's ways around not knowing, um, not being able to scan in the store. Um, as for finding, you know, the items from each individual manufacturer or each individual store, the only way to do it uh, really is for searching for it, uh, you know, and hopefully enough people have made, um, you know, put the right company information in. Um, Trader Joe's, you know, always go for all the seasonal stuff. I know all these uh, walks into a bar. Um cereal bars which they have for every season and they have I think six different ones for the actual um, all year round they have a fig and a blueberry and you know the strawberry the standard flavors um, this one's 925 and it's you know ranked about 35,000 um, but when they sell out in the store people still want them and these um, these prices usually go um, you know go up quite a bit I'm not sure if there's much historical information on these, but as you can see, the rank was way up, but um, 
you know, the price uh, was up quite a bit as well. Uh, the cheapest price is always usually merchant fulfilled without shipping. Uh, so, you know, as you can see, the rank went, uh, went up and, uh, you know, at this point right here, this is probably when they went back in stock at Trader Joe's because, you know, the pumpkin stuff is only, you know, in fall or right before it. You know, they'll have tons of pumpkin stuff and then tons of, you know, mint and holiday flavors for Christmas time. And, you know, every season they have uh, those flavors. Um, I think Trader Joe's said that they um, usually stock, you know, most seasonal items for uh, somewhere around seven weeks. And then they go into a new... Um, you know, and then they swap them out. So uh, every day they have uh, new products in their store. Um, if we look at problem with Keepa, they only are, are tracking back to February, which is when they started. So as you can see here, um, this is 2015. You see how the price went down when they went back in stock? And then if you look at 2014, you can see the price was way down again. And then as, uh, as they sold out at the store, the price just steadily grew up to 18.95 for uh, Merchant Fulfilled uh, sellers and was probably around 25 bucks for FBA sellers. And, uh, you know, again, you can see, um, you know, the rank was all over and then I'm sure that they actually sold out, uh, you know, at this point, sometime around April, up to right, you know, at the beginning of, of September again, uh, the rank went right back up because uh, they went back in stock again. So uh, people were able to get it, and, uh, you know, that was last year, 2014, and then again, 2015, the same thing happens. You know, the price goes down, and the ranking goes down until it runs out. So, uh, you know, you can either buy it and get in on it early or, you know, buy it and wait till it runs out, um, you know, and, and collect the money for the, when the, you know, price shoots back up again. Um, you know, and that's really what you're doing with competition most of the time is just, uh, you know, waiting for everybody else, all the people who are dropping the price to run out and then the price goes back up. Uh, to where you can make plenty of money, you know, and this is a two dollar item. So, you know, when it's selling for twenty five dollars, you pay two dollars. You know, sometimes it's worth holding on to for a while, and don't get, you know, don't get afraid to hold on to a two dollar item. You know, if you paid a hundred dollars, it might be something different, but uh, for two dollars, it's, um, you know, it, it's something you shouldn't be afraid to. Um, you know, you, you're not going to lose money on it. So um, don't be afraid to, you know, hold out sometimes. Um, are there major differences between Target, Walmart, Kmart, shelf pull, liquidation pallets? Um, you know, Walmart, usually uh, everything's mixed together. Um, so... I always stay away from Walmart. I mean, every liquidator is always selling Walmart. There's just so much of it. But all the junk, the broken pieces, is mixed in with the, um, you know, the returns and the shelf pulls and new stocks that never made it onto the floor. Uh, so you literally never know what you're getting. Um, you know, I've had, I haven't bought much Target stuff. Um, most of their stuff goes through B stock which I've posted the links to. Um, and there's the biggest liquidator, uh, I think, in the world, at least in, in the U.S. Um, and they do, uh, you know, they do Target, they do Best Buy, um, you know, and about 10 other major brands. Um, and, uh, you know, Kmart, I, I have bought some stuff for, um, but, um, you know, I've never really had many problems. You know, it's usually just a mix. You're going to find... 10 to 20 percent no matter where you buy from um walmart's usually on the higher end but you're always going to find you know a little bit that's not worth it but um you know i i don't know if i've ever actually lost any money on a um you know any liquidation pallets there's usually 
enough to at least make my money back. And, you know, uh, quite often I'm, you know, making a whole lot more than uh, what I invested into it. Uh, and the more you buy, the cheaper it is. You know, you buy one pallet, you're, you know, you might get it for 500 bucks, but if you're paying, you know, you're buying a whole, a whole truckload, you might get it for, you know, 150 or $200. Um, Kelly, what does it mean if it's liquid? Um, selling groceries, um, it has to be under five ounces um, or uh, you can't sell it if it's in glass. So you can't have any glass containing five ounces um, in any category. Uh, so if it doesn't have, so that's why you have to worry about, um, you know, it's fluid ounces. So if a container is five fluid ounces, you know, uh, or if it's 10 fluid ounces, you can't, uh, you can't sell it. If it's 16 ounces, you know, like peanut butter, uh, it's not something you can sell at FBA. You'll have to merchant fulfill it. Um, right, Todd said liquid has different packaging requirements. Yeah. Right. So, um, uh, if it's in plastic, there's, I mean, almost no limit. You can sell up to five gallons. So you can sell five gallons of, you know, vegetable oil as long as you poly bag it. Uh, it's okay, but the um, the restrictions is on glass containing liquid. Um, yeah, basically everything from Trader Joe's sells well. Um, Christmas candy, um, I, you know, I've sold a few few things from there, um, but you know, usually the foods like the spreads and the the pumpkin butter and the crackers and the cookies that they have that's all seasonal, um, you know, are have always been great sellers. Um, that speculous cookie butter um, is a great seller if you can figure out you know a way to sell it to make some money. Uh, they have at least ten or fifteen different listings for them. As well as the spices, so the um, you know the pink Himalayan salts, and you know they got a few kinds of vanilla, and um, uh, you know there's a bunch of things that you just don't see in regular stores. Um, let's see what else have we sold there. They have like freeze dried peas um, called Give Peas a Chance, and uh, you know we we used to sell a lot of that. I, I just don't go to Trader Joe's anymore to source. It's just, um, it's like an hour drive away from us and they don't really like you buying, you know, in a whole lot of bulk. So I couldn't buy 10 cases, go there and buy 10 cases of one item. Um, so, you know, we've just chosen not to, but, um, you know, it's a great place. If you can go there, you can, um, you know, you can build a list. You can search for a few things there, do your research on Amazon, then go there, you know, write your prices down, and you can start to build a list, you know, and once you have 20, 30, 40 different items that are selling well, you know, then it's worth the trip. And if you can go there often, you know, go there a couple times a week and pick up a few of each item, um, you know, and then you're not gonna have uh, much of a problem. Um, you know, but for, for us, it wasn't worth it because it's, you know, a good hour's drive from us to the closest one. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't buy 50 of them, you know. Uh, they give me looks and ask me why I'm buying so much when I bought 10. Now, I know uh, I've talked to other people, you know, who let them buy cases, will bring them from the back and help them load it in the car. But um, that hasn't been my experience. So, you know, they're, they're not very friendly to resellers. Um, they don't want you searching for stuff. They don't want you... You know, of course, you can't scan anything. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of problems with that. Um, so what uh, good items besides toys uh, for Q4 sales? Everything sells better in Q4. So if you're selling groceries or beauty items, can you just go in the back? Um, groceries or beauty items or... Um, you know, anything you sell, sells at a higher velocity because people are already going there looking for toys. They're looking for, you know, anything that you um, would normally buy. They're already buying the Christmas items 
So they're going to buy other items as well. They're going to, you know, stock up on their groceries. They're not going to have time because they're doing so much to get ready for Christmas or having to work more at work or, um, you know, having family come in. So they're buying more stuff uh, online. And, uh, you know, along with everything else, just everything sells uh, at a higher velocity. If you haven't been in Q4, then all you need to do is buy more than you think you're going to need because you're going to sell it. Um, so, uh, yeah, lights, holiday decor, sell all year round. Um, we saw, sold a ton of it to people in the groups. Um, and, you know, it's already, uh, a lot of it's already selling. Um, after the holidays, after Halloween, go in and stock up on that candy. After Halloween, stock up on, you know, all the decorations and costumes. That stuff sells all year long. People are doing, um, you know, um, costume parties and uh, masquerade parties and everything else all year long. It's the same with Christmas. People put up Christmas lights, you know, on their patios, uh, you know, decorate their houses, have, you know, Christmas and July parties. Um, so trees, lights decorations all sell all year round um uh, so you know don't be afraid to buy um you know to buy all that stuff uh you know once target and walmart hit 75 percent off target you know goes up to 90 percent off um we buy all that stuff and we send it right into amazon and, you know, we've never had a problem selling that stuff. We sell all kinds of Christmas stuff all year long. Ornaments, too, are great. Um, we go to, um, we go and buy all the ornaments at, at Hallmark um, in the, you know, when they, they do a 75 and a 90% off sale in our area. They have my number. So as soon as uh, anything hits 90% off, we go in there and buy it all, no matter what. They just box it up and, you know, uh, ring it all up and, and give it to us. Um, Aaron said he has 84 one toy at, you know, um, 40K rank, good ROI, little competition. Do I recommend uh, to buy more of them? Um, you know, with toys, uh, you know, it, it really depends. If it's at 40,000, then it's probably going to be, um, you know, it's pro the rank's probably going to drop quite a bit. Um, you know, what I always recommend is if it's something that's been out on the market for a while, you know, check Keepa and Camel, 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 Price Zombie, and see um, historically what's been going on. See what happened last Christmas. See what the rank was, you know. If the rank was down to, you know, 10,000 or 1,000 or 100, you know, that's going to give you, um, you know, that's going to give you some history that you can uh, go off of and see how many we're actually selling. Um, so you know about how many to buy. But if it's at 40,000, then... You know, you probably want to buy as much as you can uh, if you can afford it. You know, don't don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, I usually try and go as wide as I can, even though I have, you know, over a thousand of some items uh, at the warehouse. But, you know, I pay pennies for the items. So, uh, you know, it's a little different when you're buying liquidation. Uh, yeah, Kelly says she sells lots of kids' items all year long. Um, you know, as do we, we, um, you know, the day after Halloween, we, um, we, we hit up a lot of, uh, the Walgreens and then we went to, um, you know, we waited till they had 75 to 90% off of the Walgreens. And as soon as they hit 90% off, um, you know, cause they're in a hurry to get ready for Christmas. So, uh, it, it don't take long for those clearances to really drop after Halloween. Um, you know, and we bought them all out and, uh, you know, we were sending them in the week after Halloween, uh, tons of that stuff. And, uh, you know, we were selling, um, kids costumes, you know, um, Mario brothers and Disney ones for 30 to $50, you know, the week after Halloween. So, um, you know, Halloween and Christmas is not just, uh, you know, one time thing that stuff sells all year long. Um, 
Horn wanted to know, is it appropriate to ask how much a big seller pays in long-term storage fees, like how many thousand items in inventory, about how many dollars? Can we ask them when they'll mark down to which percentage off? Two separate questions. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, I mean, I pay like close to, not, I mean, I pay under $200 and I have over 20,000 items in my inventory right now. And um, I've never paid $200 in long-term storage fees. So, um, but of course it goes by volume. We have a lot of makeup, you know, health and beauty, tiny items. So if your inventory is giant, you know, toys, then, um, you know, it's going by volume. So that's, um, that's where it's going to be. Um, I'm, I'm not understanding here. Can, can we ask them what they'll mark down to which percent? Um, she, she's talking about for Walgreens. So like if for with the Halloween and stuff, oh. she's saying, can you ask them when they'll mark it down? Okay. So there's a separate question. Um, separate question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, we've got a good relationship with a lot of uh, store managers. So, you know, we talk to managers at Walgreens. We talk to managers at, at Walmart. You know, this business is all about building relationships. So if they see you buying consistently, they're going, you know, they're going to be open to talk to you. Um, you know, like I said, at, um, at Hallmark, uh, you know, we've built a relationship. They have our, um, our phone number taped to their counter um, and when everything gets, you know, when it hits 75%, they call us and we look through the stuff and when it hits 90%, um, you know, we have a deal where we just automatically buy everything. So, um, you know, we've built a relationship there by buying over time. Um, so, you know, I would, when you see the managers out on the floor, um, you know, it's always good to talk to them and you know, tell them you're, you know, don't be afraid to tell them that you're interested in buying, you know, everything or what you're interested in buying, um, you know, but you can't, you know, you're a reseller and you can't afford to pay that. But when it hits, you know, 75% off or when it hits 90% off, you'll take everything that's left, you know, you know, tell them to call you, give them your number, do, you know, do whatever you got to do. They're trying to move that stuff, but of course they want to get as much money as they can out of it. So, you know, don't be afraid to, um, you know, to negotiate. I, you know, um, we've gotten 50% off uh, plenty of times on the already marked down clearance items at Walmart. You know, it just depends on, you know, what they have coming in, how quickly they need to get rid of it. Uh, you know, and some managers don't want to do it at all. But if we're talking about a place like Walmart or Target, the, the four managers, you know, are have a completely different idea than, than the actual store manager. So you want to get as high up as you can. You want to talk to, you know, either an assistant manager or a manager because the, the, the actual manager wants um, to make the money and get the stuff out, you know, and make as much money as he can. He's got goals. Uh, the floor manager is probably making eight to $10 an hour. And, you know, all they're thinking about is if this guy buys all this stuff, we're going to have to come and fill all those shelves back up. So, I mean, why would I want to create more work for myself? You know, it's what they're thinking about. Now you talk to sometimes an assistant manager, but usually the general manager, you know, is worried about the dollars because, you know, it, they're not looking at an average cost. They're looking at, you know, I just sold $3,000 worth of stuff and that's going on their sheets at the end of the day. You know, it's not, oh, well, the, these items were originally $100 and I sold them for eight. You know, it's the total amount of money that's going to go, you know, on their sheets and get them a bonus at the end of the year. And they have more room to put fresh products out, you know, that aren't clearance and they haven't already, you know, wiped out of, you know, anything that they're interested in. Um, you know, so if you can get a hold of those managers and, you can usually make uh, some kind of deal. And if you can't, you know, you put it in their mind that, that they're going to, um, that you're there whenever they are ready uh, to move some product. And, you know, and that's where you want to be. You want them to be thinking about you as the first person uh, 
when they need to get rid of stuff and they don't know what to do with it. You know, they say, well, I can call this guy. As long as you're the guy that they can always count on to take all their stuff, um, no matter what the cost is, you know, they're still making a little bit of money. They'd rather do that than send it to a liquidator and throw it in the dumpster. Um, you have another question? Um, there was, Pam has one. Um, um, she had a little bit of a longer one, but um, do you have a liquidation company that you trust for, oh, it just went down. Um, for overstock or shelf pulls, not returns, for health and beauty items that provide a good ROI, and it went down again. It goes down. Um, that provide a good ROI and rankings and can start with just a lot or pallet who provide more brand names and less dollar store beauty type items that aren't already listed on Amazon. Right. Well, that's what everybody wants. Yeah. I mean, you want brand new stuff that has great rankings and, you know, no returns. And, um, I mean, everybody wants that, um, you know, but you're going to have to deal with some of the garbage to get the good stuff. You know, that's what, uh, that's what buying liquidation is about. You have to put in work. You have to sort the good from the bad. You have to have a way to get rid of the junk or be making enough money where you can just throw it away. Um, you know, if you don't want to sell on eBay, you don't want to find somebody at a flea market that can move the stuff for you. Um, you know, what we've done and, um, you know, for the lower end junk, um, if you buy a whole pallet, you know, just build a pallet of the stuff that you can't move and then put an ad on Craigslist and just sell it for a couple hundred bucks. Um, you know, so, you know, we do, we do post the, all the liquidators that we find, um, you know, and we'll help you if you find one that you need, um, you know, help looking at, at a deal that you might find from them. But, um, you know, you're going to have to sort those out uh, on your own. But if you find a deal you don't know about, we'll, we'll help you out. Uh, we do have a great, um, great one in Florida. I'm not sure where you're at, but... Um, you know, all these big companies are basically selling you the same stuff. So if you're going to beef stock or um, via trading or, you know, AML or, or any of those, they're, you know, they're getting the same deal from, you know, if they're buying it from Kohl's, they're all selling the same uh, truckload from Kohl's and it all has, you know, it's being shipped to you directly from Kohl's distribution center. So they're not even seeing it. So, um, you know, don't look at, you know, the little picture. Don't look at, you know, a pallet. Look at, um, you got to look at the, the overall, um, you know, lot that you're going to be getting and, and, you know, worry about if you're going to be able to make enough money to cover your time. Um, uh, we don't ever have a problem finding store managers. They're almost always out there on the floor if they're not doing whatever. You know, ask to talk to a manager. You know, ask to talk to whoever's in charge of the clearance. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And, you know, you're trying to give them money, you know. So maybe the guy at customer service don't want to help you, but, um, you know, he's getting paid, you know, the most minimum of wage. And, you know, who cares what he thinks? You know, get and the manager you know, you guys can always, what I've What I've done finding those people, you guys can always go into the customer service area and nine times out of ten, they have on the wall somewhere, like, this is our store manager, this is our general manager, this is our region, whatever it may be. It lists who they are, and you go up and just ask for that person. Act like you know who the manager is. You came in to talk to them and, and ask them. You can find their name very easily. Right. And, uh, you know, if you can't, you know, if it's not a Walmart where they have a post on the wall, call them up on the phone. And, yeah. you know, ask, ask who their store manager is, who, ask who the general manager is, and tell them, um, you know, and then you hang up the phone. And when you go in the store, ask for them by name, you know. It's literally that easy. Yeah. So, and when they come out, then, you know, you tell them, you know, I'm a reseller, you know, obviously I can't sell at your full price, but if you have, um, 
you know, when you're ready to drop the prices again, let me know and I can buy the stuff in volume. You know, I can, you know, I can take, you know, I can clear out your whole uh, clearance aisle, uh, you know, when the price is at the right point um, or however much of it they do want to sell, you know, what is the worst that's going to happen? They're going to tell you no, but as soon as you get them out there, you know, make sure, you know, give them your business card, get a business card made, get a cheap card, you know, with your information, um, just for people you're buying from. Don't make it for people you're selling to, you know, um, get a business card for people you're buying from. And if you need one for somebody you're trying to sell to, you get a, you, you get a separate business card. Um, you know, but make a card with your name and phone number and, you know, that you're a liquidator. Um, you know, and it's that easy. Give them your card. They're going to put it somewhere. They're probably not going to throw it away. And, you know, they might not have anything today, but at some point in the future, um, you know, they might be ready to, you know, when they need to get all that Christmas stuff on the shelf, or all the Easter stuff on the shelf, and the Christmas stuff has been out there for two months, uh, you know, they're going to call you up and say, come get all this stuff, you know, and then you can negotiate whatever price you want because uh, now they're calling you and they're on your time and, you know, they want, they want your money and they need to get that stuff out of there. Want to answer Pam's last question before we go? Where are we going? Um, she said, "Do you have a rule of thumb for what kind of bulk discount to ask a manager for when buying clearance? I.e., um, like if you got a hundred items, twenty percent additional, five hundred thirty, et cetera, or do you just let them tell you?" Um, you know, it really depends on the situation. It's more about. Um, you know, when I negotiate with couponers or, um, you know, store managers or, you know, wherever I'm buying, if I'm at a flea market or, you know, anywhere, um, it, it depends on your cost. Um, so, you know, I don't care about getting 50% off of their clearance price or 50% off of their retail price. I care about, you know, how much I can make in profit because, you know, even if it's 50% off their lowest clearance price, you know, I might still not be making but 10% uh, ROI. So it depends on what you can sell it for. And uh, you know, that's why I scan the items and then make an offer. Um, I scan the items, you know, see what they want, and then I make an offer no matter who I'm dealing with. Now, if it's a ton of items, you know, you might just scan a few. Um, you know, sometimes they'll give you half off of um, – you know, a lot of times we've gotten 50% off of their clearance, uh, their lowest clearance price. Um, you know, sometimes they just want, you know, a set amount for everything. Um, you know, so you can't really make a determination based on, um, you know, just a general rule. It, it, it depends on, um, it depends on the situation. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've gotten 50, 60, 70% off of you know their lowest price already so um you know once it hits clearance they usually don't care anymore they're just trying to move that stuff and you know salvage whatever money they can get out of it you got anything before we go todd no i'm you I'm watch football good. game no that's not me that's valerie in the background Oh man, <laughs> you busted me out. I was in the I was on the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you just busted me out. I didn't even realize it didn't push me out. I'll remember that. I couldn't find my unmute button. He thought I wasn't paying attention, so I had to say yeah. up. <laughs> Low man on a totem pole, it's her Exactly. <laughs> um the only other thing I was gonna add is someone else had a follow up question about the buy box that you were talking about earlier, Sean about, um, let me see, it's at the very beginning. Um, oh yeah, she said um, she's noticed, uh, or he or she said they've noticed a slowdown in sales. What is your new strategy in getting the buy box? Uh, kind of what you're talking about at the very beginning about uh, if you're a little bit above the buy box, um, you're not gonna get it. Where you see you could be one or 2% above. Uh, right. Yeah, that's what we covered. But um, 
you, yeah, them, you basically have to beat them now, I, mean, I think, is the way it is. I mean, don't you agree, Todd? Yeah, for those that missed that we were basically talking about, and we've heard this from multiple sellers, that previously you could be, you know, between 1% or 2% of the buy box price. So if, if the buy box, someone had it at nineteen ninety nine, you could price yours at, say, you know, $22 and still get a rotation. Sometime in August, depending on when they roll it out to the, the different products, they change that to where unless you're matching that buy box price, you'll never get a rotation. So the way that works is if the buy box is nineteen ninety nine and you're priced at twenty oh seven, you may never get the buy box price as long as someone has it in stock at nineteen ninety nine. So if you notice that your sales came to a screeching halt, go in and tweak your repricer, check your sales, and make sure that you're setting on the buy box price. Um, speculation is that uh, with Jet coming into the marketplace, which um, is going head to head with Amazon and competing on price, that Amazon is more price sensitive. That's kind of been the feedback I've had, but. Regardless, um, go ahead and check your prices. Okay, great. If anybody has any more questions, um, you know, go ahead and post them in the group. And um, on Wednesday, I think we're covering uh, using Joe Lister to, um, you know, cross post your items from um, that you already have listed on Amazon and FBA. You can uh, use this tool to post them uh, also onto eBay. So, um, you know, it's a great tool. It takes very little work. Uh, you basically log into both accounts and select what you want to post. And, um, you know, there, there's very little work involved. You get a notification and uh, you just do a multi-channel fulfillment and send the item right from your, um, your Amazon inventory. So, uh, you know, it's a great way to uh, post all or some of your items uh, into a whole new marketplace without, um, you know, a ton more work. So definitely tune in to that uh, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, um, and we'll post the information in the group. Thanks a lot.